You are looking live from the Ed Rodericks Court on the campus of New Bedford High School, where tonight the New Bedford Cable Network is proud to present Boys High School Basketball Rivalry Week as the New Bedford High Whale is at six and one, take on their arch rival from Fall River, the Durfee Hilltoppers at five and three. Chris Santos bringing in the action, Joe Cabral away, he is not here tonight. Happy to be joined by Mr. New Bedford himself, <laughs> Pete Braley for tonight's broadcast. And Pete, if any indication what it was like in football and what it's like been in this rivalry the last couple of years in basketball, we're in for a humdinger. Yeah, you can feel it tonight, Chris. It's a Friday night New Bedford. The uh, stands are packed. We've even got a rock band set up down uh, one end of the stadium, so uh, we don't know how noisy it's going to get in here tonight. But we're coming off an exciting JV game that just finished, a very competitive match. New Bedford winning 65-59, to a couple of tees in that game. So, yeah, we'll see what happens tonight. We've got the 6-1 and one New Bedford Whalers taking on the 5-3 and three Durfee Hilltoppers. So on paper, it looks like a good match. Had a chance to talk to both coaches, and the first thing I asked them, Pete, was the atmosphere and how do you control the emotions in a big game like this? They talked about the history of the of the rivalry. They talked about what it is, even from what you saw in the JV game, a lot of technical fouls being called, and the emotions of what have happened on the football field and recently in the last few outings that the basketball teams have played has been pushing and shoving. Don't let this game determine what kind of person you are later on in life. That's what some of the coaches have to say. All right, we're about to get underway, and the uh, teams will be introducing the starters. First for Durfee, who uh, they are coached by Joe DeCruz, and New Bedford, of course, coached by Matt Hill, who's in his fifth year, coming off a disappointing season last uh, year, two and 17, but already six and one. So he's gonna be happy with where his team is going, though we, Still have a good, what, month and a half of the season. Yep, they're coming off a last second win. Yes. A shot over O'Brien the other night. Demarius uh, Roberts hitting the buzzer yep, beater. up at Boston. Uh, it, it, it's not what I see from Roberts. It's what I see for the rest of the team when Roberts is not in the game, Pete. Look for that tonight. Going to be very important. All right, so the starters being introduced for Durfee and uh, number one, Devontae Stewart. Number three, Jaden Espinal. He's someone to watch as far as one of the lead scorers. Number five is junior Eric Lucas. And then uh, we have two seniors starting. Number 22, Alexis Montilla. And number 23, Jaleel Simmons. Jaleel Simmons. Uh, about to get loud in here with the introduction of the Whalers. Coming off a loss of 74 to 59 against the Indians who had beaten New Bedford just prior to that. Right. So starting junior for New Bedford were number zero. At uh, number three, I'm sorry, is Craig Baptista. Number 15, Joseph Anderson. No. Anthony Diacate, the junior, number 23. Joseph Goodine, number 33. Messing up with the starting lineup. They are. Now it's JV and Lloyd who's getting the start, along with Desmond Brunskill. So they messed that up a little bit, but Robert's in there as well. All right, so your starters for the Whalers. Now we will stand and pause for our national anthem here at the Beersworth Gonzales Gym and the Ed Rodericks Court.
Our national anthem here from the Beardsworth Gonzales Gymnasium in a one-sided bleacher open only. It is not completely packed, but it is a combination of New Bedford and Durfee all together. We are moments away from this one. Durfee in the red and black trim. New Bedford in the home white. Three officials are ready to go. I'm ready to go. And my play-by-play -play announcer, Pete Braley, is ready to go. Pete. Can I hire you to come around and introduce me everywhere I go? That's, that's great. Yeah, it, it's a little deceiving as you look on the camera. You think there's nobody in the stands, but it's just they have that side of the uh, gym. Uh, it's not open. Yep. The bleachers are not open. Yep. We were talking before the game about how it used to be all the Bedford fans on that side, Dorothy fans on the other. But Well, hey, look, you know, this is the way they've done it recently. <clears throat> Why can't we just all get along like one big happy family, I guess? <laughs> And everyone's together, so not only on the court, but even in attendance. Uh, you know, we, we got people here, security, we got watching going on. Uh, I, just hoping for a good game, so let's get this one on the way. All right, eight minute quarters. Again, the six and one Whalers against the five and three Durfee Hilltoppers. Two of their wins coming at the Skip Carum tournament back in December. And jumping it up will be Anthony Diacate and Alexis Montilla for Durfee. And the ball goes to New Bedford. A three-point attempt right off the bat by uh, Demarius Roberts. He's wearing number 14 today, listed as number one on our roster. So let's make a little correction there. He misses a three. And the Hilltoppers setting it up. Coming in, making a layup, but missing is Jaden Espinal. Rebound Durfee, three-point attempt is no good, but Durfee controls the rebound once again. They put it up, do not get it, but a foul. Yeah, that foul will be on Diakate, his first, but Pete, two chances off the glass. New Bedford can't have that. That'll be a long evening if that goes on. I told you uh, watching the JV game that the uh, Durfee Hilltoppers seemed to control the rebounds in that game also. You did? New Bedford ended up winning that. but So missing the first shot is uh, senior Jaleel Simmons. 7.25 to go. And still no score. There's the first points. And that's Simmons with one. Keep an eye on Roberts. He makes other people around him better, but he's not afraid to shoot from anywhere. Side, looking for an opening. This is Javian Lloyd who gets it over to Roberts. Back to Lloyd. Tries to go inside, taken away by Durfee. That was Eric Lucas who gets it off to Devontae Stewart. Yeah, that's just good smothering defense in the 2-3 zone that Durfee is starting out with. Once again, the Whalers get it inside, bump it back out, the three-point attempt is good for JBN Lloyd. Yeah, and that's a player, Pete, that New Bedford needs to have a big evening. Didn't have a good game, in my opinion, uh, at Dartmouth. Shot is missed by Espinal. Durfee with the rebound again. New shot clock foul call. Oh, traveling on Simmons. So a turnover to the Whalers. It's amazing how much you've dominated, Pete. It only takes one shot, a three-pointer, and you got right. a game tied. That's how much uh, that shot means in basketball. Playmaker J.B. on Lloyd tries to get Good something luck. going inside. Good Ooh. pass. Ooh, but did not get the roll. Diakite. Dia Good look by New Bedford. Got to finish. Eric Lucas for the Hilltoppers. Is inside, bumps it back out to the corner. Shot is up and uh, missed three-point attempt by Stewart, 3-3, three, three, 5.50 to go in the first. And mm. long shot by Lloyd misses. Durfee with the rebound. This is Espinal. Nice travel. And the second travel called that on Eric Lucas. New Bedford will take that all day. Couple quick turnovers. Now you gotta execute on the offensive side. Baptista inbounds to Lloyd. Back to Baptista, Lloyd, 
Almost taken away there. Yakate. And the layup does not go for Demarius Roberts. Yeah, and that's what he does well, Pete. Fakes the outside jumper, makes you commit, then goes hard into the glass. Couldn't get that one to finish, that's all. So the foul was on Simmons. Roberts misses the first free throw. 5.22 here in the first, still tied at three. <laughs> And Roberts makes his second shot, first point of the night for someone who uh, is usually in the scoring column for the Whalers quite a bit. Offensive. Oh, they're going to oh, let him play. Basket. They're going to let it go. They're going to let him play. No whistle on that for Lucas. Pull up shot, rebound by the Whalers. Ooh, near us. Taken away, though, by the Hilltoppers. Here we go, all the way down the court. Could not handle it. That was Devontae Stewart. Yeah, that's a tough one there because that's an easy bucket. And he just lost control of the ball. So the Whalers will come back. And the first expression of Joe the Cruz on that one saying, you gotta be kidding me. How do you how do you not hold on to that ball? You gotta think this game has been circled on their schedule for a couple of oh, weeks. Both teams. Yep. Shot is up and missed by Roberts, only has one point so far on the evening. Back come the Hilltoppers, this is Simmons. This is a back out. Shot put up by Espinal, wouldn't a good go. good pass. New shot clock, no need to rush. Again, second and third chances for Durfee though, can't have that. Durfee's gotta get one and out. Eric Lucas is fouled. First foul on Javion Lloyd for the Whalers. So Lucas will go to the line. Yeah, I mentioned Demarius Roberts uh, with only one point so far. Yep. I'm sorry, not to the line. But right. He'll take it out. This should back out. Lucas, here's the shot. Did not go for Simmons. Look up. There it is. There it is. Nice. That's how you pass. That's how you move the ball. Desmond Brunskill with his first points of the night. Pass gets there faster than the feet. This is Espinal. Number 23 is Simmons. And Devontae Stewart. That shot doesn't go. Rebound Whalers. They battle for it, but come away with it. Is Avalos. Oh, got to throw a foul there. No doubt about it, the body. It's a good call. Evan Avalos. Yeah, it's the I'm sorry, uh, Goodine, right? You said, you told me Jaron Goodine yep. is wearing number 10 tonight, which is usually worn by Evan Avalos. So Goodine goes to the line. Yeah, and he did the right thing. He turned his right hip, laid in the body into Montilla, and he drew the foul. I know the ball was blocked, but he got him with the body. First shot off the back of the rim. Let's watch it. Yep. Tried to make uh, make it all ball, but got some of the body as well. And Goodnight makes the second shot. So New Bedford's up 7-3 with 3.30 to go here in the first. Little... Pressure that we know and love from New Bedford, and we've seen it for over a decade, if not even longer. Espinal lays it up and in. Too easy. Missed assignment. Back come the Whalers with 315. Mentioned Demarius Roberts only with one point on the mm -hmm. night. He had 29 in the loss to Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. It's not there offensively. Let other people just find a way to get it to him. Tyler Mills in the game now, but that goes out of bounds. It'll stay New Bedford ball with 13 on the shot clock. Jensen Farnworth comes in now to give a rest to Demarius Roberts. Mm -hmm. And this is what we want to see here. Who else can score when Roberts is not in the ball game? Uh, Durfee reached in. That was uh, Eric Lucas. 
trying to intercept that inbound. First foul for Lucas tonight. Kudine comes over in the corner. A three-point attempt does not go. Rebound Durfee. That was Farnworth, who just came into the game trying to make that three. Back come the Hilltoppers. 2.42 left to go. All the way to the basket, but would not go. Rebound New Bedford. On the ground first. See who they call this on. We had one player lose his shoe there. That was Joseph Goodine. So the first foul on Farnworth. Farnworth, who just came off the bench. Yeah. He makes a good steal. Yeah, makes his presence known and brings it down court for the Whalers. Off to Goodine, and it travels. Yeah, that, that movement, Pete, has been something that officials are calling a lot of. Yeah, make sure you put the ball down first. They've just been doing that a lot. I noticed watching a Durfee game recently, getting ready for tonight, yeah. that uh, there were quite a few traveling calls yeah. in that game. And you, you, know, you would think by the time you get to the high school level that traveling's not an issue anymore. But Yeah, you, you know, you're so fast sometimes, you take off before you put the ball down. Yeah. Simple as that. Farnworth coming back. Had trouble controlling that ball, taken away by Durfee. Here's a lead pass in the corner, but he's gonna set himself as uh, Stewart. Good spin move. Spin move in a basket by Devonte Stewart. His second basket of the Knights. Tied up. A minute 53 left to go. Wheeler's working on the outside, trying to get inside his good eye, taken away. Battle on the floor. Durfee comes up with it, but they throw it away and New Bedford picks it up. Count it, two points for Desmond Brunskill. And a whistle. A lot of people say, what, what did I do? I don't think it was anything special. New Bedford will continue to press. Craig Baptista coming in for Brunskill. Small right now, Pete. Small is New Bedford. Small lineup. A minute 30 to go in the first. Let's see if they work it down low. This is Espinal, one of the lead scorers for the Hilltoppers. Lucas. Eric Lucas decides to take it himself, and it's good for three. First points of the night. Back come the Whalers with a minute two to go in the first. From the corner, off the rim and no good for New Bedford's Craig Baptista. Don't be on Goodine. That's Joseph Goodine. Yes, we have Joseph and Jaron playing on the team. Of course, Goodine, a well-known name here at New Bedford High. A little bumping action there between uh, Farnworth <laughs> And Stewart. Oh, they call that a foul on him, too. Wow. It's interesting. So Devontae Stewart will inbound, gets it to Lucas, back to Stewart. Will give and go, shoots it down the corner, but now they'll reassess, set themselves up, go nice uh, ball rotation, and a three pointer for Espinal. And Durfee's the one with the good ball movement right here in the last couple of minutes. On the floor, battle for it, and the whistle blows. It is going to be Durfee ball with 31 seconds left. Roberts will check back in. And the Aikate will check back in as well. Lenore with the inbound. He's gonna get it back. Ooh. Nice crisp passing. That's off to Espinal, but did not go. And it goes out on New Bedford. 21.6 seconds left. Durfee up 13 to nine here in the first. Are you surprised at the uh, score here at the end of the no, first? No, no, it seems right. 17 seconds left for the Whalers. As they work it down court, going all the way and the layup does not go. Now the finger roll too strong. For Roberts, back come the Hilltoppers, five seconds left. They got a chance if he moves the ball quickly. Taken by New Not Bedford. there. You don't want to do that. 
And a basket for Espinal to end the first quarter. His seven points so far. That's what I have for Espinal here in the first. And at the end of one, we have the Durfee Hillchoppers leading New Bedford by a score of 15 to nine. Good defensive battle on both teams working hard. Extra glass and possessions for Durfee has given them a six point lead and some bad turnovers late for New Bedford, but some good three point shooting also by Espinal and Lucas to give them that lead. But see, you just can't pass the ball back here. No. That's just not a good idea. Not when it's you know right down the end. You gotta move the ball forward. Uh, they didn't do it. They have five fouls. Durfee has three as we get ready to start the second quarter. Well, heads up play there by Espinal at the end of the first quarter. Yep. By the way, Espinal, who's a uh, junior guard for Durfee, he was named the most valuable player of the Skip Carum tournament around Christmas time. He scored a team high 21 points. He averaged 23 points per game in the two day tournament. So the second quarter gets underway. New Bedford will put the ball in play. They are trailing 15 to nine. This is Baptista. Who gets it back to Rodericks, Colin Rodericks. Back to Roberts who shoots a three. And it's off the rim, rebound Whalers. And Baptista is able to uh, bounce it off the Durfee defender to go out of bounds and keep possession. New shot clock. See what they do with Roberts here. Got him at the uh, free throw line. Moving the ball around quite a bit. Get it inside, get it up, but a good defensive play there. Daya Kate battling, but the Hilltoppers come away with it. And here comes Eric Lucas. Bogus looks around, sets up his play. Loses the dribble, gets it back, and gets it off. Whoa! And it's three points for Jaden Espinal. I got a feeling you don't want that guy to get hot. Yep. Double digits already. Colin Rodericks looking for help into the corner. Nice look. That was Anthony Diacate. And he'll go to the line to shoot his first free throws. New Bedford coach Matt Hill said before the season started that free throw shooting was an issue for them last year. Yeah, when you just shot an air ball, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say that needs some help. <laughs> They missed 12 free throws in the game against Bridgewater Raynham. Mm -hmm. They got the win in that game, but Coach Hill admitted that they uh, had some work to do at the line. He misses both. And that's going to be New Bedford ball. Baptiste got alive, kept it up there, and it was tipped off. So. I thought he knocked it out of bounds, but yeah, I guess not. Yeah, me too. Baptista, over to Rodericks. Ooh. Looking for a high pick. This is Roberts, decides not to shoot. Oh, the ball gets away. Ball was kicked. And it will be Durfee ball. 6.41 to go in the second. Durfee with a nine point lead. Lucas with a few bodies around him, but Durfee gets the ball free and up court. Jaden Espinal over to Eric Lucas. Lucas over to Espinal. A pick is set, poked away by New Bedford, but Durfee still has control. And going into the basket. Oh, there was a foul. I thought they'd get away with it. That was uh, Avante Lenore, number 10 for the Hilltoppers. That foul on Diakate. Mm -hmm, his second. That will send Lamore to the line. Avante Lenore, who is a junior. Both of these teams heavy on juniors. Durfee with eight juniors on the roster. 
Six seniors, one sophomore. New Bedford High, very junior heavy team. They have 10 juniors, only three seniors, and one sophomore. And he makes both. And New Bedford will make some changes. Jo jo uh, Joseph Goodine comes in, and also J.B. on Lloyd. Well, they better find some offense, Pete, because nine points in a half is not cutting it. This is the six and one Whalers against the five and three Hilltoppers. Gets away, Roberts goes back to retrieve the ball. Six minutes to go here in the second. Roberts trying to get inside, makes the shot, will not go, rebound New Bedford. And the putback was by Brunskill for his. And a steal. Steal for the Whalers. Rodericks for two. And Rodericks gets two. And a whistle. 5.41 to go. The Whalers have cut their deficit to seven. And he'll be shooting one on one. This is Lucas. The Buffett trying to find some easy points with their defense. They just got two from Rodericks. But unfortunately for Lloyd, he fouled, picked up his second. He's got two, Farnworth with two, and the Aikate with two. Seven team fouls on the Whalers. So he does not make the first. So will not get the second. Taken away by Durfee, though. Looking for help. This is Lucas. No, no, he nice gets travel. it with Espinal, but another no, travel no, 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 is called. As you said, the uh, referees seem to be calling that more yep. this season. Devontae Stewart comes back in the game for the Hilltoppers. Well, 5.30. Are. Yeah, they've been laid by Stewart and Espinal. Them guards have been really sharp here tonight. Rodericks gets it over to Brunskill, back to Rodericks. I'm sorry, that was, yeah, Colin Rodericks with the shot, would not go. Rebound for the Whalers. Rodericks has to work inside, lay it up, and he's fouled. Let's see what they call this one on. That's his second. That fouls on Eric Lucas. Second. And Colin Rodericks goes to the line and makes his first shot. His first point on the night. 20 to 14, Durfee leads with 5.11 to go. And that one rolls out, rebound Durfee. And Eric Lucas brings it back down court. To the basket, challenged and no luck for Devontae Stewart. Go to the basket, to, yep. well behind the back. Behind the back pass to J.B. on Lloyd, who picks up two. 20 to 16, Durfee. This is Espinal, who has the hot hand for the Hilltoppers tonight. That three does not go for Lucas. And the Whalers can cut the lead even more. 4.27 to go. Nice pass inside and laid up by Joseph Goodon. And a good time for Coach Joe DeCruz to call a timeout. Yeah, I'm going to get uh, six straight unanswered. Cut that lead, actually five unanswered. To go from 20 to 13 to 20 to 18, DeCruz says, whoa. <laughs> I know it's a matter of, you know, runs, Pete, and runs happen. And New Bedford has it right now. As you see, a full house here at the Beardsworth Gonzales Gym at the Ed Rodericks Court. It is a Friday night in New Bedford after it pretty much rained all day. Good to get out and enjoy a game. As the Whalers, we take a look at their road ahead. They will play Sunday afternoon. They'll be right back here to take on Foxborough. Next Tuesday, the 17th, they'll go to Brockton to play the Boxers. Next Friday, a week from tonight, they're at Dennis Yarmouth. Then they have a week off. They go to Barnstable on the 27th and close out the month of January on Sunday the 29th with an afternoon game here against the always tough Taunton Tigers. It's 
Good little comeback right now by the Whalers. They got to keep the momentum up. Only down two, 424 to go in the half. Devontae Stewart gets oh. it inbound. Oh, that dangerous pass. Was up there for the picking. Espinal comes away with it. 415 to go. Whalers down by two. This is Eric Lucas. Gets it off to Lenore. Puts it up and will not go. Rebound, Whalers. And this is yeah. Demarius Roberts. Yeah. Tough pass. Remains New Bedford ball, though. So Roberts will inbound it. This is Lucas right in front of your camera, or rather uh, Tyler Mills mm -hmm. right in front of our camera. Roberts goes way out, almost taken away, but Tyler Mills with it, and he traveled. 3.55 in the half. So yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. Something on that, Pete. You inbound it to Mills. Your best player is doing the inbound. Let him come back. Settle down. Mm. Let him get into the flow. Start the play up and over again. Don't rush it. Lucas over to Lenore. This is Lenore. Oh, he's, hamming. he's hamming from Mills. He's hamming from Brunskill. He's hamming from everywhere. <laughs> And that foul will be on Tyler Mills, his first. And this is Avante Lenore. I have him with two points on the night so far. Both coming through free throws. That one bounces in and out. I was gonna say, we haven't heard the rock band since uh, no. in between games there. I don't know if yeah. they're gonna play at the half or what. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole setup down the far end of the gym. Lenore makes the second shot. Durfee with a three-point lead, 21-18, 3.37 to go in the half. Halftime concert, Pete. I guess. <laughs> Rodericks drives to the basket. It was tipped as he put it up mm -hmm. and rebound Hilltoppers. Jaden Espidal brings it down, shoots it into the corner, and a good play there. Basket nice. made by Lucas. Five points on the night for Lucas. This is Roberts over to Lloyd. Gets it inside, back out, and the shot, three-point attempt is good for, was that Rodericks? No, that was Lloyd. Lloyd. And I said he's the one that has to really help Roberts. He didn't do much in Dartmouth, but he's got it going tonight with eight. This is Lenore, who we've called his name quite a bit, going to the basket, but that one would not go. Rebound Whalers, 242 to go. I like that. Side to the basket. Like that. Good one. Don't be flexing. you got to be careful. They'll call you for technicals. We saw that happen in the JV sure game. Did. Somebody made a basket, then flexed underneath, yep. and that was a T. Nice pass ahead to Espinal. He's going to pull it up, dish it back into the corner. Back out to Espinal. One of the lead scorers for the Hilltoppers. 17 on the shot clock, so plenty, plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Espinal into the corner. Three-point attempt goes off. Ah. Rebound, Durfee. Ah. See, so you, 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 you got a box out there, and you got to get that rebound. Brent has got to be on that. And we get a technical. Technical on the Whalers, I believe. All right, we're going to have something here, so. I think the. So the. So Mills gets the technical. Mills Rodericks gets, gets the regular foul. Okay. All right, so Rodericks with the foul, and Mills gets the technical. Not good. So shooting for Durfee will be Alexis Montilla. He is one of the six seniors. Game tied at 23 with just over two minutes to go in the half. And you said another T coming to the bench? Somebody said something. I heard the whistle blow. I saw fingers pointing toward the bench. <laughs> well, that's no, no good. We saw two 
We saw two tees called in the JV game, and it's carried over here. So that should be one here and then another two, plus the ball. So Jaleel Simmons made that shot. I'm sorry, that was, that Montilla. was Montilla. Yeah. And now shooting two more will be Espinal. Now, how do they decide who shoots? Is it a team decision? Does the uh, does? Yeah, the coach can. Coach De Cruz decides yep. who's going to shoot the yeah, team. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Jaden Espinal, ten points on the night, make it eleven. Yeah, hey, you might as well put it in the hot hands, right, of your yep. leading scorer. He makes two. So that's what three points that were given up for the T. Yep. They're going to get again. And that T cost them four points. Talked about it at the beginning of the game, Pete. Four How to more. control the emotions in a big game like this, right. in a rivalry game. Have to do a better job. So we were tied at 23, but yep. now Durfee leads by five. Under two minutes to go in the half, and Durfee has the ball. Going toward the basket and scoring is Simmons. Wow. Seven point play. Seven point play. We don't say that much, do we? Nope. Durfee leading 30 to 23 with a minute 41 to go. This is Craig Baptista. <sighs> who has been held scoreless on the night so far. He gets it off to Roberts, who lays it up, whistle blown. Basket would not go, but Roberts will go to the line. Simmons is third. As Roberts goes to the line. Junior Demarius Roberts, as I mentioned, he's one of 10 juniors on the squad. And he makes the first shot. So looking at that, I would think uh, Coach Hill is, is very excited about the fact that, you know, he's got a good squad this year, and most of these guys will be back next year. Mm -hmm. Roberts makes both. Yeah, it's always promising. Tyler Mills coming in in place of... Well, I didn't see who went off. But Lucas has the ball for the Hilltoppers. Long pass to Lenore. Under the basket. Dished out to the side. And Lenore shoots a three off the front rim. Rebound Hilltoppers. And Lenore. So the, the Whalers still struggling on rebounds. Yep. Agree. Not, not so much at the free throw line as they have in the past, oh. maybe. But struggling on getting those rebounds. 113 to go here, down by five is New Bedford. Third foul for Anthony Diacate. And the shot is in and good. Espinal playing well. For Espinal. And that ball gets away from Mills. He's got 16 as New Bedford turns it over. 57.6 seconds to go here in the half. As Durfee beats the New Bedford Press, brings it back down court, gets it to, out to Lucas at the point, and a trip. Going to get a foul there on Mills, or? Yeah. Mills. His third. So the fouls are adding up for the Whalers here in the first half. Trailing by seven with 47.6 seconds to go. And we'll see Devontae Stewart at the line. He's got four points so far in the night. Take it five. Now, Duffy had gotten off to a good start. And they kind of, kind of got beat. They lost their identity a little bit. They're trying to get it back. Doing a lot more teaching recently and seeing what they can do, and they know this is a big one tonight. Off the front of the rim, rebound for the Whalers. 
And this is Roberts all the way to the basket. And do we have a foul? We do. Yeah, we've got. And we have a technical. Alexis Montilla was the hilltopper who was wondering what he did wrong. He thought the ball was tied up. And is that a foul on uh, technical on Roberts? Uh, so the foul was on Lucas, which is his third. Roberts will shoot, but he'll also pick up a technical. And unfortunately, it's the same official who's called all the technicals. I've got Roberts with eight points on the night. See the referee talking to him, maybe trying to calm him down here. <laughs> so now we'll go to the other end of the court. Whalers down by six. And this will be the hot hand of Jaden Espinal. He will shoot the two because of the technical foul to Roberts. Espinal makes the first. 39 seconds to go here in the half. And the second one is off the rim. So 34-27. Durfee will inbound the ball. Sandin will check in wearing number 14 for Durfee as they can hold it almost to the end of the shot clock. This is Espinal. <laughs> Gets it off to the side, trying to get it into Lenore, taken away. I thought New Bedford had it, but Durfee took it back, and Lenore goes to the uh, basket. That was wild and out of control. Yeah. He was hoping to draw a foul, I think, there. It did not happen. Yeah, they got a seven-point lead. Why not wait to the end? The shot clock was only a two-second differential. Now New Bedford has 20 seconds to get off a good look. Shot clock is off. Yeah. This is Lloyd. Oof. Over to Goodine. Down to nine. Lloyd is going to shoot. And it's off the front of the rim. Gonna Rebound New Bedford. Shoots. He tries again. And it won't go. Got a chance. And Bedford doing well with the rebounds here, but they could not get three tries to go. And that's the end of the first half. So the first half comes to an end with Durfee leading by a score 34 to 27. We have had a few technical fouls called already in the first half as the referees do not want this one to get out of hand. Well, well yeah, they had a chance, Pete. And then the technicals, remember, it was tied. Then the technicals came, and that really hurt New Bedford, and it set them back. Now they're down by seven. They'll have to regroup, get ready for second half. Down by seven, and as you said, there was a seven-point play yeah. for Durfee because of technicals. We'll take a short break. We'll come back with first half statistics and the second half of tonight's game between the Durfee Hilltoppers and the home team New Bedford Whalers in just a bit.
We are back at the half with the score. The Durfee Hilltop is 34. The New Bedford Whale is 27. Chris Santos and Pete Braley bringing you tonight's action. Let's take a look at the statistics from the first half. At the end of the first quarter, it was 15 to nine in favor of Durfee. And then at the half, the second quarter, Durfee had 19 points, New Bedford had 18. Leading scorers, Espinal with 17 for Durfee. Stewart with five, Lucas with five, uh, Lamore with three, Simmons with three, and Montilla with one. For New Bedford, they're led by Lloyd with eight, Roberts with seven, Brunskill with six, Rodericks with three, uh, Joseph Goodine with two, Jaron Goodine with one. New Bedford was nine for 28 for 32%. Meanwhile, Durfee, uh, let's see, came in at 10 for 33 at 30 percent so pete pretty similar in everything but those technical fouls seven point swing in durfee's favor that's why they got a seven point lead yeah pretty much and you would think probably matt hill the new bedford coach at halftime addressing that with his players saying this is a big game you got you got to keep your emotions in check which i'm sure at the high school level is a huge thing to, to ask a high school player to keep his emotions in check but they've got to do it with a full house here tonight. You know, and it's not only about tonight. They've been talking about it all week. They've been talking about the history, the rivalry, control your emotions. It's been saying everything. You get on the court, bang, and you get hit for it. These two teams will meet again in Fall River on Valentine's Day. Oh. We'll see if the Whalers bring them any roses. Well, Pete, they... you, you got a girl score for us? I do. At the half, the Lady Whalers are leading uh, Durfee. They're playing in Fall River, yep. 20, 21 to 18. Okay. So Low much, scoring. Yeah, much closer contest. We are underway here in the second half. And the travel is called against Simmons. We've had quite a few traveling calls today, too. Yeah, we have. And it's interesting. Lucas is on the bench to start this second half. He's got three fouls. That tandem of him and Espinal have been very good for Durfee tonight. This is Demarius Roberts with the ball, who dishes it off to Goodine. The crowd, uh, the Durfee crowd wanted a uh, travel. A three-point attempt misses by Baptista. Goodine puts it back, that's an air ball. That was actually Lloyd, wearing zero. Okay, <gasps> Yep. thought it was number 10, yep. thank you for that. Air ball on that one. This is Stewart driving towards the basket and all the way picks up two points. Good move against Roberts. Back come the Whalers, 36-27. This is Demarius Roberts, one of the hotter hands for the Whalers tonight. Shot is up and too long for Lloyd. And back comes Durfee. Simmons tries to take it all the way. It's going to go off on New Bedford. That was off of run skill so Durfee will have the ball 30 seconds on the shot clock Lenore makes a move brings it in towards the basket and does not go let him play right now tumble on the floor and it's going to be the Whalers ball as Lloyd will inbound Junior Javion Lloyd gets it over to Roberts. 6.30 to go in the third. 36-27 Durfee. Lloyd over to Baptista, back to Lloyd. Lloyd will dish it back out, they'll put it around and the three-point attempt by Roberts misses. Rebound for the Whalers and a basket. Yeah, the Aikate. For Anthony Diakite, I've got that as his first points of the night. That is correct, and yeah. at the same time, you Bedford with some glass and a turn over here. So the ball was stolen by Baptista, who then got fouled as he went toward the net. And that's a bad foul for Simmons. Picks up his fourth. So we'll see if Simmons will sit down for a bit. And he's going to roll with the punches, too, and bring in Lucas with three. Wow. New Bedford could use one there against him. That would be awesome. Boyd gets fouled. Yeah, if New Bedford could find a way for Lucas to pick up a fourth, 
That would mean really the bench now for the Cruz. So Roberts tried to get that ball over to Baptista. Mm -hmm. Oh, collision there. Baptista with the uh, Kurt Rambus look, huh? With the glasses going back a ways. Way back. Yep. He was in the coaching for a while, wasn't he, Rambus? I believe in the WNBA. Possibly, yeah. I think. I don't think it was the NBA. Baptista and Roberts. Ooh, oh, no foul. Taken away by Durfee. Good steal. Good steal by Baptista, who brings it in, tries to draw Strong. the foul, doesn't get it with the basket. His first two. So New Bedford hearing from some players that had been quiet in the first half. There's a shot by Stewart. Yeah, never got back on defense, unfortunately, where New Bedford made him pay for it. 39-31, Durfee, 5-10 to go. And that ball's short. They but travel. a travel underneath, so the Whalers will get possession. Matt Hill trying to tell Lloyd, relax, settle it down, don't rush the shot. So New Bedford with a fresh shot clock, that's 35 seconds. And over to Baptista, his three-point attempt is short, but a rebound for New Bedford. Baptista. We'll pass into the corner. Ooh. And that was uh, Diakite trying to get the shot off, but he was fouled, I think, by number 22, Alexis Montillo. His second foul of the night. Durfee with two players that were watching. Simmons has, what, four fouls? Yep. And but, also Lucas. But he's on the bench and Lucas is in the game. The Aikate has missed three in a row. That needs to improve. Farnworth coming in for the Whalers to replace J.B. on Lloyd for a bit. See, I, I had to give him the kiss of death there, <laughs> Pete. I the had to, announcer I, jinx. Exactly. I had to swap it, a little roll reverse. So the officials called a foul. I think it was on Craig Baptiste. First foul for Baptiste. 4.53 left to go here in the third. New Bedford putting the press on, but Durfee's able to get it down courts. And they wait for the rest of their teammates to show up. This is Lucas. He's going to pull up the shot and make it. And it's a three. A three-point shot for Lucas. That's his second third of the night. Roberts into the corner. Three-point attempt. Does not hit the net at all. And back comes Durfee. Three-point attempt is off the rim, but a rebound by Lenore, who is fouled. And the frustration on uh, Craig Baptista there as he goes to the, the mat behind the net. See Baptista picking up his second. Mm -hmm. Three in the first half from Lamore, all from the charity stripe. Avante Lamore. It's his fourth free throw of the night. Colin Rodericks will come in for Baptista. Give him a break with 4.13 to go here in the third. Lenore's second shot. And it's in. So he's got five points on the night, all coming from the line. Roberts works it down court. Biggest lead of the night, 13. Durfee leading 45-32. Shot was denied. That was Diakite. Yeah, Montilla went with the block. And the official is going to come up to the Cruz and say, what are we doing? And the Cruz is saying, man, you know, that looked like a pretty good block to me. The official saying, yeah, but his body came up into him. And Diakite missing that shot. You see a little frustration coming already on the face of some of the Whalers. Yeah. 
Coming into the game is Goodine. Jaron Goodine. His brother Joseph also on the team. Diakate makes his second shot. I have him with three on the night. Diakate for four. Okay. He made two free throws, if you remember. I jinxed him on one and he got it. <laughs> and then he just made one there and he has a bucket. Pressure put on by the Whalers, but it'll be Durfee ball as it goes out of bounds. Yep. Poked away by New Bedford, but Durfee still with the ball. Now the long pass to Lenore. Gets it underneath. Oh, it falls in. Montilla. For Alexis Montilla, one of the seniors for Durfee. This is Goodine. Gets it out to Rodericks. Rodericks over to... Come back to Rodericks. Now Goodine with the shot, puts it up. That was too strong. And Lenore has it. It'll be off Rodericks. Yeah, it's off Rodericks, so it'll stay Durfee ball. 3.23 left to go. We have a timeout somewhere here. It looks like it's going to be for New Bedford. So Coach Matt Hill calls timeout. With this team down by 13 here in the third quarter. Something I did not expect to see tonight, Chris. I expected a much closer game. Uh, I, I did, and it was. And those technicals are at New Bedford. And they get up by seven. And obviously they're uh, being um, down by six points here to start the third quarter. Uh, in, in Just in this third quarter to have a 13-point lead. But Durfee has cleaned up on the glass. New Bedford's not making free throws as well. And uh, easy buckets, too, for Durfee. So they got a big lead. And New Bedford, again, has to find some more offense. It's definitely an exciting basketball season here in New Bedford with the uh, boys at 6-1 and one and the girls doing well also. They're, yep. in, they're in Durfee tonight. They're playing uh, against the Lady Hilltoppers. They were leading at halftime 21-18. And we understand that our colleagues over in Fall River at Fred TV are doing that game tonight. Okay. So if you are a fan of the girls, you can check that out later. As we mentioned, New Bedford High will be back in action Sunday afternoon. They'll be right here on the Ed Rodericks Court hosting Foxborough in a Sunday afternoon game. Yep. Don't know if I can make that. I have the yeah. exciting playoff game of my Miami Dolphins yeah, playing that's Buffalo. Right. Good luck to you there. Lucas with the shot that would not go. Rebound, New Bedford, Brunskill. Who gets it down to Roberts. And the three-point attempt from Brunskill is no good, but a putback. I didn't see who that was. No, two points for the Whalers on that one. Yep. So 46-35. Jump ball. And a jump ball is called. Lenore. Getting up, favoring maybe that right ankle. Number 24 checked in for New Bedford, but I don't have it on the roster. No, I don't. We so don't have a 24. Not really sure. Of course, they did change some numbers before the game tonight. So, and that's going to be New Bedford ball. Offensive foul. That foul was on uh, Cameron Demello. Yep who just came in the game. So this is Roberts bringing it back for New Bedford. 2.40 to go here in the third. Whalers trailing by 11. Roberts gets it in underneath, but he's tied up or a foul called. Another one, two quick ones for DeMello. And the Cruz is going to the bench once again. This time it's gonna be Sherry checking in. Benjamin Sherry, a sophomore. So the inbound pass intercepted by the Hilltoppers. The ball's all over the place. Lucas could not get control, but back out, and a three-point attempt is off the front of the oh. rim. So the foul is against Brunskill. Duffy's got 16 fouls. New Bedford has three with 2.19 to go here in the third. 
This is Lenore who gets it in and driving toward the basket and making the basket is Lucas, who picks up two more on the night. I believe he's at 10 so far. He two is. Double digits. Goodine drives toward the net, puts it up and in. <laughs> A minute 52 to go here in the third. This is Lucas, who dishes it off to Espinal, who we haven't heard much of in the second half. No, he's had some foul troubles. He was the top scorer in the first half, I believe, or one of them. No, he was the yeah, top scorer, yeah. right? He was. Actually, Lucas is the one in foul troubles. Lenore has that one get away from him. And coming all the way back Oosh. and driving to the basket and missing. That's his good was Roberts. But then Brunskill twice. Brunskill puts it back. That's, that's his fourth for Lucas. Ooh, so, that is big. Him and Simmons, each with four, and the Cruz has some thinking to do with 120 to go. He's got to go to his bench. Here he goes. Desmond Brunskill completes the three points. And Sue's checking in for the Hilltoppers. Looks like number 30, no. 33? Uh, no, I can't. No, I was right, number 30. Marco Brazoban, senior. He's going to replace Lucas. Yeah, he has to. Who has four fouls. A minute 17 to go here in the third. Yeah, I think it's smart New Bedford to press here with some unfamiliar faces. Durfee works it around, can't get inside, driving to the basket, and Big making one. the basket is Espinal, his yep. first basket of the second half. Yep. None bigger than that, though. Took seven minutes, but he made it. And a foul's call. 57 seconds to go, Durfee up by 10. As that follows the second one on Stewart. And Roberts to shoot two. Demarius Roberts misses on the first one. Missed free throws. Killer. Technical fouls and rebounds. I guess that would sum it up the problems mm -hmm. for New Bedford tonight. He makes the second shot. Almost picked off by the Whalers, but all alone underneath. And the basket is made by Benjamin Sherry. First time we've called his name today. Whaler strong to the basket, but would not go. Rebound. Let's see who they called it on. They'll say it's Durfee Ball. As Diakate was not able to control that one. Roberts with the pressure, but a nice move by Lenore, or Lenore. And they're going to call a timeout for Durfee. That was uh, Benjamin Sherry again, who was on the sideline, could not decide where to go with the ball, and a timeout called by Coach Joe DeCruz. 26 seconds left in the third. Whale is down by 11. Eight, though, Joe, oh, excuse me, Pete. 18 fouls for Durfee. That's a lot. New Bedford only has three. three yeah. So think about that when you get to the bonus. Get chances, get to the basket, get fouled, and make your free throws. Could come down the stretch in the fourth quarter, could use it. So both teams seem to have calmed down a bit after we had, what did we have, three technical fouls yeah. in the first half? All on New Bedford. I'm sure that was addressed at halftime by Coach Matt Hill, who, it doesn't seem like it, he is in his fifth year. I remember the excitement when he was uh, hired to be yeah. the head coach here in New Bedford. Yeah. That was five years ago. And here come the Whalers. As you can see, a full house on one side. I don't know if it's full because I don't have the other half open, so I guess technically it's not a full house. But one side of the gym, the bleachers open, and both teams with fans on hand. This is Espinal controlling the ball. He gets it off to Lenore. Called his name quite a bit tonight. 
Lenore over to Grazaban, who came in because of foul trouble for two of the Durfee starters. As that one poked away, yeah, they'll and lose that one. Be New Bedford ball. We have Eric Lucas, and who's the other player in some foul? Uh, Jaleel Simmons. Yep. Both with four. Three seconds left to go here in the third. Shoot it. Goodine gets it off, and the shot is mm. offline and no good for Jensen Farnworth. We've played three quarters, and Durfee leads New Bedford 52 to 41. Well, we'll see how the Whalers come out with one more eight minutes to play, one more quarter basketball tonight. As we mentioned, New Bedford, their next game will be Sunday afternoon here as they host Foxborough. Then they go on the road for uh, technically two weeks. Next Friday, they're at, well, next Tuesday, they're at Brockton. Next Friday, they're at Dennis Yarmouth. Then they have a week off before they go to Barnstable. So a few away games, which usually means the girls are home, right? If the boys are away, the girls right. are home. For Durfee, their road ahead, they are off until next Friday when they host the Somerset uh, Berkeley team. Monday the 23rd, they go to Braintree. Then Thursday the 26th, they host Bridgewater Raynham. As we said, common opponents this year for both teams. They both played Dartmouth. They both lost to Dartmouth. New Bedford had a closer game than uh, Durfee did. New Bedford losing by only five. Down by 11 to start this fourth quarter. And here's Mr. Pete Bailey with the play-by-play. Pass game made by Anthony Diacate. New Bedford keeps that press on, but Durfee's found a way to get through it just about every time. That foul is on Farnworth. He picks up his third for the night. Now it comes back to those technical fouls that were called against New Bedford, really hurting them here. And again, it was a seven point play with Big those time. technicals. Already misses on that one. Bodies go down to the floor. New Bedford gets the ball away. Down into the corner and the layup, and it's in for Lloyd. Down to eight. Exactly what they wanted to do to start this fourth. Put the pressure on some of these guys who haven't played much. Durfee has had to go to the bench because of foul trouble, and that one will stay Durfee ball. Because that was off the foot, I guess, of... Diakite. I think Montilla is going to check back in, finally get him going. I expect to see Simmons and Lucas. And I'd give him maybe another two minutes. Two of the shorter players there in that inbound. Derby popping it back out to Lenore. This is Espinal. The high scorer so far tonight. Back to Lenore, who can't get inside. He'll dish it back out to Espinal, who takes the three off the rim and rebound by Roberts. Can cut it down to five. Roberts takes Good it all look. the way, dishes it off. On the ground first. Mm, does not count. Foul on the ground first. The Akate took the shot. Montilla now picks up his fourth. Wow. Decision time for the Cruz. So Durfee with three different players having four fouls. Now this is interesting. I thought the pass was already made and Diakate was gonna be the one to shoot. And Roberts goes right to the free throw line. Now they're talking and discussing. <laughs> yeah, and they're not gonna get away with yeah, this one, Pete. We, we gotta switch this up, yeah, guys. Yeah, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> good, <laughs> good try there. So Diakate, who has struggled a bit at the line tonight, will shoot for New Bedford, trailing. Yep. It's 52 to 45, yep. Durfee, 6.42 to go. Yep. Plenty of time. There you go. Yep. Yeah, Kate makes the first. Three for seven. Second shot's good. Even better. Down to five, Pete. Good to make those at a crucial time sure of the game. Is. Only a five-point lead now. Off 
travel. And a travel against Lenore. Six nothing run right here. And we'll see if the Whalers can get two or three more. So we'll have Lloyd with the inbound. He's got Roberts right in front of him. Number 14, Roberts with the ball back to Lloyd. Lloyd over to Brunskill. No. Oh, almost picked off. But that tough pass there. Recovered by Roberts. See if he goes or takes the three. He's got 18 on the shot clock. Three point attempt is no good. Easy. And it's tied up. That was Farnworth trying for the three. Yeah. Durfee has the ball. They have the possession, possession arrow. arrow. Yeah. New Bedford with the press, but Durfee's able to get through it this time. Down the court and all alone is Lenore, oh. who sets, shoots. Whoa. And, oh. Wow. That's a big one. A big three-point basket wow. for Lenore. First points in the fourth. Yeah, that was a big one. 55-47 with 5.52 to go. And the timeout was called by Matt Hill just before Lloyd buried that shot. Yep. So he's like, what'd you do that for? Yep. 5.52 left to go in tonight's game between the 6-1 and one New Bedford Whalers and the 5-3 and three Durfee Hilltoppers. As I said, both of these teams will meet in Fall River on February 14th, on Valentine's Day. Of course, there's plenty of basketball to be played before, oh, yeah. the, before that date, before the end of the season. What was the uh, dartmouth Turfy score? Because I mentioned New Bedford only lost by five to Dartmouth. Yeah, 15 for uh, Durfee getting beat by Dartmouth, 74-59. Mm. So no. after today, they'll play Somerset Berkeley, Braintree, Bridgewater Raynham, and then they have a little bit of a tournament, I believe. Uh, so we'll see how that goes for them. Now you said you were at the New Bedford Dartmouth game. Yes. Is Dartmouth that good, or did New Bedford just have well, a Dartmouth's night? Dartmouth's got, you know, they're young too. They got a big man down below. They got a, a, a young point guard that can play. And they got some good role players. Good solid team, the Indians. New Bedford gets the ball back out. This is Desmond Brunskill over to Farnworth. Roberts, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Brunskill looking for help. Goes all the way across the court to Lloyd, who puts it up and hits the front of the rim. Rebound to Bedford, blocked again. And, and one. Nice That's by good. Diakate. And we've got a whistle. Yeah, should be a foul. Let's see who they're going to call it on. It's Montella, and it's going to be his fifth. Alexis Montilla. He'll foul out. He is one of the six seniors. So Christopher Durfee. Milfoot. Never heard of him. <laughs> the junior coming in with 526 to go. The crew's going to the bench. Yeah, I could take. Could cut this down to five. Oh, that one didn't Rebound. Go. And it's New Bedford ball, yeah. as the referees confer. So it did. So yeah. Lloyd will put it in play. 5.24 to go. The Whalers down by six. I was waiting for Simmons to come back in, but he hasn't. Kind of surprised. Back out to Roberts. Fresh shot clock. Blocked by Durfee. Yeah, and they're going to call Roberts over the back on that one. Call Roberts. Yeah for the foul, so it'll be Durfee ball. Yeah, that, was, uh, that was not a good possession for New Bedford. Turn that over quickly. New Bedford putting the pressure on here. Mm -hmm. Lucas is back in over to Espinal. Mm -hmm. Back down to Stewart, back to Lucas. In the corner. This is Espinal controlling the ball with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Good spin move. Nice move by Stewart. No, 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 no. Travel. No basket. 
Traveled. Traveled, and Lewis can't believe it. Or rather, Stewart. Stewart cannot believe it. Guess he went a little too more with that spin move. We've had a number of traveling calls yeah. tonight. So New Bedford comes back with 4.44 to go. They're down by six. Roberts to Lloyd from the corner. Mm. Missing on the three. Can get a jump ball? Yep. Is Baptista. Jump ball. jump ball favors New Bedford. The Whalers still trying to break that six points yeah, margin they, they, here. They can get a swing here, Pete. Cut it down to three, let's say. Could make this very interesting. They got to get some points. Roberts, who's got Baptista in the corner, he's yeah. going to dish it to Lloyd. Yeah. And it's taken away by Durfee. And the whistle blows. Yeah. Foul is zero, Lloyd. Foul is on Lloyd for New Bedford. So it's his third of the night, and Durfee has possession with 4.20 to go. 16 fouls, so still not a one and one yet, but the next one will be. This is Jaden Espinal, top scorer so far for Durfee tonight. Over to Lucas. Lucas drives toward the basket, Good pulls move. up, shoots, hits the front of the rim, and rebound Baptista, who just grabs that ball and sure. won't let anyone take it away. All the way to the basket did not go for Roberts. Too strong. Yeah, rebound by Durfee. Lucas comes back with it. It's gonna stay down for a little bit down there, Roberts. He traveled. Another traveling call against Durfee. Roberts down, got banged on the floor there. I don't know if it was his left hip. He gets pulled up by the trainer, Nate Walker. And that was five against four, Pete, and they traveled. <laughs> That's not good. So who's going to score now for New Bedford without Roberts in there? They got to get something going on the offensive side. And he travels. They're going to call a travel on Baptista. Silly. We haven't had a point scored in at least two minutes. Yep. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game. The Whalers trail by six. Only a two possession game. Jaden Espinal drives to the basket, dishes it off, and the shot is up and off the rim. <laughs> that by uh, Stewart. No, that's Back travel. Out. That's travel. Back out for Durfee, new shot clock. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't call that. Lucas drives. He's fouled, but it does not go. That foul is called <laughs> on Brunskill. Second. So Brunskill yeah, second. Fourth. Yeah, first fourth. Durfee does have one player, Alexis Montilla, who fouled out. First basket for Lucas is good. And Baptista comes back in the game after being shaken up earlier. <laughs> Baptista going to the bench. And Lucas misses the second shot. Durfee goes for the rebound, and they're going to claim it was Whaler out of bounds. Ball. Coach DeCruz disagrees. Whaler ball, 56-49 with 3.15 to go. Roberts brings it down. Still time to find some offense. Lloyd drives toward the basket. He tries to dish it up, but he's fouled. And Durfee with and shooting. 10 fouls, so he'll go to the line. Mm -hmm. First. JV and Lloyd. First free throws. With, I think, 12 points on the night, but as you said, his first time at the free throw line. And he makes it. Three oh six to go. Six point lead for Durfee. Lloyd shot. It is good. Five point game with three oh three to go. New Bedford putting on the pressure. Ooh. Lenore keeps it in bounds. Can't let him drive. Gets it back out to Espinal. Shot from the corner by Lucas does not go. Rebound Durfee. Uh, 
And a timeout is called by Coach DeCruz and the Hilltoppers. Big rebound there. And once again for Durfee, even guys who've coming off the bench still get an opportunity to get some big rebounds. This time it was Milford, number 21. So New Bedford still struggling with those rebounds and it has hurt them tonight. That and of course the technical fouls. First time I think I've ever called a seven point play because of back to back tees. Yeah, tough one there. 2.44 to go. We'll see who the Whalers send out. Baptista, I'm sorry, not uh, Baptista, but uh, Demarius Roberts really doesn't seem to be showing any lingering effects. He, he went to the floor hard, was helped off the court by the trainer, but seems to be okay, and he comes back out now. We've got Brunskill, Diakate, Lloyd, Roberts, and Farnworth in for New Bedford. Durfee will inbound. In the corners, Stewart gets it out to Lucas. Lucas, this is Glenore, drives toward the basket, does not go. It'll stay Durfee ball. 16 still on the clock, plenty of time. 226, down by five is New Bedford. Avante Lenore. Trying to force that in the middle. Off New Bedford. Durfee ball. The Whalers fighting for possession of that ball, mm -hmm. and now for the third time, Lenore tries to get it in. He does. This is uh, on the sideline there. Devontae Stewart had it poked away and out of bounds. To the referee trying to dry up the floor. Mm -hmm. Make sure all spectators stay off the playing surface. Avante Lenore will inbound now for the fourth time in the past minute, it seems. You see athletic director Tom Tarpey there with a, looks like a sweatshirt instead of a towel to mm -hmm. dry up the wetness. 2.21 to go. Durfee inbounds. Ball's put up too strong, but a rebound Durfee. That didn't go, and the Whalers have the ball. This finally. is Lloyd. Yeah, finally. Yeah. Roberts drives to Good the move. Net, gets two. The body. The body balance. Down the three, Pete. Three-point lead for Durfee. Bad pass. Picked off by Farnsworth. Oh, and he stepped out of bounds oh. on the sideline. Jensen Farnworth. And a great defensive play. Oof, lost balance and stepped out. Could have been something for the Whalers, but yeah. they, they still have a minute 53, down by three. Oh, yeah. Plenty of time. And back comes Lucas. Lucas with a move, dishing off to, oh, a travel on Jaden Espinal. So the Whalers. I'm curious if Matt Hill's gonna call a timeout here, but I guess not. A delay of game called yep. against the Hilltoppers? Yeah, that's normal. Right. Touch the ball, you can't touch the ball. Lloyd over Roberts. Good look inside. Diakate. Yes. Diakate. It is a one point game with a minute 28 left. Don't foul. Make them earn it. This, this is, is the guy you got to watch out for. Likes to drive to the basket. Lucas. Here he's he goes. Got some good moves. He dishes it off. And the shot is off the rim. Rebound, Whalers. Roberts coming back with 107 to go. To Lloyd. Back to Roberts. Very calm is Demarius Roberts. Taking it into his own hands right here. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 54 in the game. Good look inside. Yakate. Yakate is fouled. 
The Whalers trail by one. There's 48 seconds left. And Anthony Diakate will go to the line to shoot two. He's been on the line a couple of times sure tonight. He has. No one else or jinx here. Let's look nope. what just happened. Oh, in and out. Again, still down by one. I think Matt Hill wants timeout. Simmons just came back into the game for Durfee. He has four fouls. But yeah, I figured I thought he'd be in a little bit earlier personally. 48 seconds left. So if you're Matt Hill, what are you discussing here? Obviously, you want Giacchetti to make the shot. Well, you do, and then if you want to press after that, if he misses the shot, how aggressive we for the rebound? Because remember, if you foul, they go to the line going the other way. I'll have to wait and see what happens, you know, on that particular thing. Yeah. So a timeout by Matt Hill. As the Whaler fans and cheerleaders trying to urge their team on. By the way, I mentioned the fact that we had a rock and roll band here. They played at halftime. I wish I had their name. I do not have that either. Obviously, some students from the high school that have a rock band put together, and they played at halftime. It's pretty good. All right, so here we go. Durfee leads by one with 48 seconds left. Anthony Diacate has one more free throw. Lloyd in there, Brunskill in there up front. Fonworth and Roberts in the back with the Aikate on the line. Think he's a little nervous? I don't know. He's been at the free throw line an awful lot. Let's see if he can make one. It's good. Tie game. Timeout. Timeout, Durfee. Durfee. Well, the ball goes through, in my opinion, the hands of number five, Lucas. I expect to have him with the ball. I expect him to set up top key, drive to the basket. They collapse on him. He'll look to go to the outside. If not, maybe he'll take it to the hoop. You heard it here first. We'll see what happens. How quiet, though, has been Espinal here in this second half. Yes, he has. Half. I mean, only, only two, two points, points in the third quarter, and that's it. He had 17. And he had a very good first half. You can see a good, uh, good portion of our crowd on hand tonight. Yep. You know, I mentioned earlier how I expected this to be a much closer game. That was when Durfee was up by 13. And here we are with 48 seconds left and the game tied. New Bedford has Farnworth, Diacate, uh, Brunskill, Roberts, and Lloyd. Here we go, 48 seconds. We're keeping an eye on number five, that's Lucas. Oh, the ball's kicked by Jerfy and out of bounds. It'll be Whaler ball. Pressure defense. Different players in the game. Simmons comes in. Ben Cold Pete sitting on the bench. Loses control of the ball, and New Bedford will get it. 44 seconds left. The Whalers will have possession of the ball. After this timeout that was called by New Bedford's Matt Hill. Well, we did end up with a good one tonight. Sure did. As we mentioned, the uh, Whalers are back here Sunday afternoon against Foxborough before they go on the road for three games. I assume while they're on the road for those three games, almost two weeks of basketball, the girls will have home games. 15 to four in this fourth quarter in favor of New Bedford as we are tied up at 56 with 44.6 seconds remaining. And whatever Matt Hill said at halftime to get them to calm down, we haven't had a tee since yep. early in the second period. 
So the music pumps up the crowd, which pumps up the guys. Looks like the same lineup is in there. Lloyd, Roberts, Farnworth, Diakate. Now this is interesting in the matchup. Simmons is on Roberts. That's very interesting to me. Ball goes out to Roberts. You can go seconds. in the backcourt. He's going to drive toward the basket and lay it up and make it for the lead. 33 seconds left. Pass down to Lenore, who is fouled. So he'll go to the line. That was he'll Jens foul out. Jensen Farnworth. Yeah, that's the right call. I have no problem with that call. He did foul him. So now it comes down to Avante Lenore, who has made five free throws. None bigger than these, though. Pete, a little more pressure. A little more pressure. You saw Diacate was telling the crowd, trying to pump them up. Got a rebound here if he misses. Second chances has been Durfee. 27 seconds left. That one goes, so it's, it's a one-point one point game. He can hold it. He can hold it. And a timeout is called with 24 seconds. But your best player can't foul out. And he just fouled out. That's Lu Eric Lucas, who has been on fire tonight for the Hilltoppers. That can't happen. I mean, he, he's got to back off. He's got to ask for help. And he knows others have to foul if you're going to foul. I, I'm shocked by that. So we'll have Roberts go to the line. New Bedford leads by one point with 24 seconds left. He's got two shots. None bigger than these. No. Nope. Roberts' first shot is good. Two-point lead. This is a bigger one because I would think the Cruz would call timeout and set up a three. I'd be surprised if he runs a... If he makes it. Second shot is good. Gonna let him play. And he calls timeout. Ew. Okay. Wow. 20, wow. 24.3 seconds to go. Here in the game with New Bedford leading by three. Got a good one. I think at one point they trailed by 13 in the third period. But they worked their way back yep. thanks to the hot hand of junior Demarius Roberts. I was saying before how New Bedford has 10 juniors on their roster, only three seniors. So they will be losing Tyler Mills Genuel Costa, and who is the third senior? He escapes me right now, but uh, T Tyler Mills looks like only two seniors. So they're going to put pressure on the ball, Pete. I don't think you want to foul, obviously, but you want to make it very difficult for Durfee to move the ball. So Lloyd in there up front, Godine in there up front, Brunskill up there but the Akate in the back with Roberts in the back. Now you see the New Bedford boys all set as Durfee breaks their huddle and they come back onto the court with 24.3 seconds left. Here we go. Man to man, full court. So the press is on. Yep, but, but see how they're making it difficult to get the ball up, that's good. Here we go, Stewart. Who wants to take the three? They're going to give it into the hands. Espinal. This is Simmons. Got to get it back. They got to hurry. Lenore. Seven seconds He's got to shoot the three to tie this. And he's trying to get a position to shoot it, but they he's got, got no, no time. Shot. The defense has shut it down, and that's the game. Wow. A great defensive wow. effort at the end. 
all that time. They got the ball to Jaden Espinal, who has been the high scorer of the game, but he's had a very quiet second half. He's yep. only got two points in the second half. Yep. They got the ball to Espinal, but he had no open yeah, look. But you got to have Espinal at the top of the key with the ball earlier. He was nowhere to be found. They went to Simmons, then they tried to find him. By the time he got him, he was already double team. It was under 10 seconds. Too much pressure. They had no chance to take the shot. What a comeback for the Whalers. New Bedford at one point trailing here in the third by 13, comes back and wins it by three tonight, 60 to 57. Well, it's a great one here in New Bedford in a huge comeback. They'll improve to seven and one. Durfee will fall to five and four. I want to thank my broadcast partner, Pete Braley, for stepping in tonight, Pete, and for Joe Cabral. It my was pleasure. an awesome game. Great game. And something that we thought would be a little bit tighter early. Uh, tough seven point lead for, um, for Durfee at the half, and then you thought at the end of the third, 52-41, this would be a tough comeback for New Bedford, but they did the job. They did it, all right. So that'll do it for us for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. As we mentioned, the New Bedford girls were playing in Durfee tonight, and our colleagues at uh, Fall River TV, Fred TV had uh, that game, if you wanna look that up and check how the Lady Whalers are going. For all of our camera crew and those in the truck, we thank them for their work tonight. There's a shot of your rock and roll band to take us out of here. On behalf of Chris Santos, in for Joe Cabral, I'm Pete Bradley wishing you a pleasant evening and a great weekend.